Okay, so it's time for the Manchester United versus Norwich City preview. One wish Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should have is that Norwich City uses the 4-2-3-1 that they usually use instead of the 4-1-4-1. Manchester United does not have a 100% record against the 4-1-4-1 formation and coupled with the fact that they have a very poor away form, you do not want Norwich to play the 4-1-4-1 formation. Now, Leicester City lost to United using that formation, but... United faces a lot of problems when it faces the 4-1-4-1 formation because it heavily overloads their wing backs or their full backs or whatever you call them. Now looking at this match, Manchester United will probably have Ashley Young and Twin Zibi at the back on the left and Lindelof and maybe Bissaka at the back on the right. Now if you look at Norwich City, their talisman is Buendia and he actually controls the position for the team. He's got the best stats in almost every category you can think of. He's a firecracker, he's a problem. People like to talk of Timu Pugi, but Buendia is probably the talisman, the biggest ace that Norwich can actually play. Now, you do not want Buendia with his dribbling skills, with his vision, with his flair, with his speed and the likes, facing Ashley Young and Tuan Zibi. And now, if Leicester City play the 4-1-4-1. This is exactly what is going to happen. Without Paul Pogba, Ashley Young is still the one who's controlling position for Manchester United. So you know all their attacks, all their moves will be starting from Ashley Young alongside Twenzebe. And that's very bad for United because if uh, Leicester City play the 4-1-4-1, they will be controlling their position from the area between Buendia and Ligna and McLean. And trust me, as weak as Norwich City look right now, Buendia and McLean will always win the day over Ashley Young and Tuan Zibi. So, if Leicester City play a 4-1-4-1, expect... Sorry, if Norwich City play a 4-1-4-1, expect them to be controlling the attack and maybe even the possession because they'll be controlling their possession from up the field in Manchester United's final third and Manchester United will be controlling its possession from its uh, final third as well, meaning Norwich will be operating higher up the pitch. And you know in football, when another team is operating in your area, mostly in your final third, they've got every chance of beating you. Combine that with the fact that Norwich City has got those touches that they showed against Manchester United. City and United has got a poor defense right now, uh, which probably, you know, uh, relies on just filling up the area with people. It's a very bad situation for Manchester United. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's wish for tomorrow should be that Norway start with a 4-2-3-1. This will give him a very high chance of winning. If Norway starts with a 4-1-4-1, Manchester United's chances of winning in this match drop down to 35 to 40%. Note the way you heard it from is the critique. Now let's talk about the next point. Both Norwich and Manchester United do not have anybody uh, really in sparkling form. Uh, for United, the best player right now is Marcus Rashford. Considering that he's doing poorly, it tells you the story uh, where Manchester United is concerned. Norwich will look to Buendia, even though he isn't in uh, sparkling form himself. None of the teams have someone who's actually attacking the goal constantly, so this might turn into a drab match. But Norwich has the advantage in that uh, their chief creators of chances are operating up the pitch you've got Buendia, uh puki and to a lesser extent cantwell so the people who actually create havoc and chances from which norwich city can score are up the pitch now the problem for manchester united is their two chief creators of chances right now is ashley young followed by rashford Ashley Young is operating in the area that will be covered by Buendia, Litna, and Puki. So if Norwich City actually managed to stifle uh, Ashley Young and subdue him and keep him pegged back, that means Manchester United does not really have an outlet to actually create chances to score. They'll be forced to play on the counter-attack. And if they're forced to play on their counter-attack, it means Norwich City will be doing most of the attacking and thus controlling the match. Rashford is the other chance, uh, creator of chances for Manchester United but he's the striker he's actually supposed to be finishing uh the goals so the chances so to have a team which relies on the striker to score goals and to create chances means uh, as an attacking force united have problems so this might actually then uh with a good analysis encourage norwich to put the 4-1-4-1 formation because manchester united is looking like it's there for the taking let me know what you think about this in the points below because this is one of the most important aspects that will determine 
who this match will go to. Uh, it's looking more right now like a draw and slightly in favor for Norwich as I continue the analysis. As we continue to analyze attacking options for both teams, you realize that Norwich has got more attacking options and the team which has more attacking options usually comes out tops. Now, Norwich have got the ability to penetrate United more via their right flank as Buendia is a very uh, silky player. Now, if they switch from a 4-1-4-1 to a 4-2-3-1 and start with Cantwell and Stipperman, it means that Norwich will be able to attack United across the whole forward line of Norwich creating problems for United. Now, if Norwich also decide to go via the air, if they're playing a 4-2-3-1, they can attack uh, United in the air via Stipperman. Stipperman attacking Victor Lindelof and Puki looking to pick up the scraps of the second ball. If they do switch to a 4-1-4-1, they still have somebody also attacking Lindelof in the air in the guise of McLean, who's actually a more dangerous opponent in that respect. Again with Puki looking to pick up the scraps. So what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should not do, looking at all the potential attacking options that Norwich had, is to play a back three. Yes, he stumbled upon a back three against Liverpool in a 3-5-2 uh, formation, which got him a 1-1 uh, match. But if he's a real analyst, if he's not a PE teacher, the PE teacher that I say here is he will not then again use a back three because Norwich can exploit the back three on the ground via Cantwell, uh, Stipperman and Buendia dribbling through or via uh, Buendia dribbling through. They can also attack the right uh, wing back and the left wing back more easily since there's three in the back. If they go via the air, Puki will have less people to deal with when the ball bounces off either Stipperman or McLean uh, for a second ball, which he can then finish. So we shall see how good Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is. Uh, if he plays a back three, he's opening up a whole world of possibilities to Norwich uh, that they can actually attack United with. And it will now be up to the Norwich coach to see if he's astute enough to take advantage of any mistakes that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can make tactically in this respect. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, do not play a back three. If you do, chances of United winning this match become very slim. I talked about the fact that uh, Norwich City will be doing most of the attacking, pressing United in its final third, and United's uh, only option right now will be looking like a counter-attack. Now, what you also have to consider is how Norwich deals with counter-attacks. It's got forwards who are very good at pressing the opposition and stopping them from actually coming out of their area. Like I said, it would be very critical for Norwich to actually press uh, and subdue Ashley Young to make sure that most of Manchester United's attacking threat is actually nullified. Now, are they able to do that? The answer is yes. Buendia, Litzner, McLean, Cantwell are very able to press United's back line and actually stop them and tackle them, intercept and clear the ball and stop United from actually uh, counter-attacking. If he tries a long ball, uh, the person they'll have to look for uh, to do that is Ashley Young. And if he's subdued, which he probably will be since uh, Buendia, uh, McLean and Cantwell are able to press the back line, United can actually be locked down in uh, their area. So as I actually go on with the analysis, it looks like Norwich have got a clear upper hand in this match. Now, when you get to the back, the defenders are uh, like Anadu, Godfrey, Lewis, uh, Aarons are to a lesser extent also able to, you know, defend and stop Manchester United from attacking. So it looks like United's only outlet, which is counter-attacking, will be dealt with uh, effectively by Norwich. So I'm actually now sort of like getting biased towards the fact that Norwich is going to take this match. Okay, so Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should be mindful to put Daniel James on the right wing and not his traditional left. Why? Because attacking uh, Norwich via their right flank is not really going to bear fruit. There are people who are more than capable of stifling United attacks from that end. And since even Norwich's midfielders will be concentrating on the right flank, United should also go via its right flank to avoid the likes of Tieti in the midfield because Buendia, as prolific as he is going forward, usually messes things up a lot and Tieti and other midfielders usually have to clean up to him. But since he's the talisman, Norwich will basically put resources to ensure that Buendia has got a, a comfortable game uh, where he can attack and then when he loses the ball, somebody cleans up against him. To put James in that fracas will lead to problems since James is also prone to getting yellow cards for rough uh, fouling. So if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is worth anything, he should put 
Daniel James on the right flank so he can actually uh, connect better with Rashford. There will be less problems for United there because Norwich will not really be attacking through that right flank. So this is the way that Manchester United can actually find a route to go since the counter-attacking will probably be dealt with quite effectively by Norwich. So this is my analysis of the Manchester United and Norwich match. Please let me know what you think uh, in the comments below. I think Norwich City will either draw or win this game. Manchester United is looking like it's sinking deeper and deeper into trouble. Unless, of course, the Norwich uh, coach does not have as much vision as the critic does. So like the channel, hit the notification bell, comment and share the video and have insights that actually give you a better way to deal with your hard problems as you support Manchester United and as Manchester United continues to go down the drain. I have bad news for you as you can see. Uh, maybe you probably get away with it. Who knows? United gets lucky at times. But the way that it's looking for my analysis, Manchester United will have another long weekend with Norwich City having a complete, not a complete, but a very big advantage over United if my analysis has anything to do with it. Cheers.